And this is the Boomerist Car Channel on all of YouTube, and today I'm going to teach you how to repack front wheel bearings. Hello friends, welcome back to the Boomerist Car Channel on all of YouTube. I'm Paul Shin, that's Model T, and today we're getting back to work on termite bait, finally. So there's only a couple things left to do. We have to pack the front wheel bearings and I have to figure out why the taillights aren't working. So uh, today I just wanted to focus on packing the wheel bearings. I've done it before in a couple of other videos, but it kind of gets lost in the shuffle. I wanted to do just that because I think it's really important. A lot of people overlook that. It causes a lot of problems on the road. And Model T is going to be cleaning up termite bait so that we can send this car back home all nice and shiny. And you know what will make you go faster? What? How about a coffee in a can? Yes. <laughs> all right. Nice. Yeah. Let's do this. Step one is we got to break these lug nuts loose. And once they're loose, then I'll go ahead and jack up the front end one corner at a time, put a jack stand under it, just for safety. Make sure the car is in gear and or the brake is set before you do this. You don't want the thing moving around on you. Okay, those are loose. Let's get it up in the air. Even though I have a jack stand under it, I'm still going to leave the jack under it also, just for safety. Alright, now we'll send this outside for Model T. Mm. She'll go ahead and clean that up. And then I'll get to work getting this drum off of here. Every one of us who's over 50 knows this sound. Okay, time to get this drum off. First thing we got to do is back off the brake adjuster five clicks. Now we got to get the cotter pin out of here. Well, this nut was only hand tight. Not good, guys. When we get done with this, I'm going to show you how to properly preload the front wheel bearings. Oof. All right. Let's get this. There we go. All right. The race looks like it's in pretty good shape. The rear bearing looks like it's in decent shape. And this one's well packed. I don't know why the outer bearing wasn't that well packed, but the inner one's definitely well packed. So I'm going to get this out, clean this all up, and show you how to pack wheel bearings. For those of you lucky enough to have had a shop class in high school or at least some kind of a trade, you probably had a teacher show you how to pack wheel bearings, and we used to do it by hand all the time. That's still the best way. There's devices and machines that will help you pack wheel bearings and make it kind of an automatic thing, but really what you want is a handful of grease, and I'm just using regular old Timken wheel bearing grease. The idea is you want to get the grease all in there and inside the rollers, and what we're going to do is we're going to pack by pushing the grease into the bearing, okay? So I like to put my thumb through the middle. It just helps me guide the bearing, but I'm going to push grease into the bearing like this until I see grease coming out the other side. So I'm just going to keep packing this, get the grease out of the middle, put it back in my hand, keep packing this until I see grease. Here it is. Grease is coming out the other side now. See that? See that? Okay. Now I got that side. Now I'm going to rotate. I need a little bit more grease on my hand here. Rotate the bearing around just a little bit, and now I'm going to pack this area. And I'm just going to keep doing this until I get all the way around the bearing, and the bearing's fully packed, and grease is coming out of the rollers and out of there. Okay, now that the bearing is fully packed, now I'm going to go ahead and put it back on the spindle. Like that. Now, of course, you got greasy hands, so now's the perfect time to do the other bearing, even though we don't need it yet but it'll save me uh, a few gloves having to re-glove over and over. I'm going to go ahead and pack the outer bearing now. Okay, now the bearing is fully packed and ready to go on. I can't put it on just yet, so I'm just going to set it on top of the washer here and get it ready. Meanwhile, I'm going to go ahead and wipe these hands off 
get ready to put this assembly back together. Now, good news is these brakes had been done fairly recently before this got put away. So the brakes on this thing are practically new. I'm not going to worry about them. I'm just going to adjust them before we actually start driving it. But man, the brake shoes on this thing and the drums looks like brand new. So there's no doubt in my mind these brakes were done just before this thing was put away before it's long slumber. All right, let's put the drum back on. Now, unlike the rears, these aren't keyed, so you can put them on just about any way you want. Just got to make sure they fit over the brake shoes and everything right. I'll put the outer bearing in, our freshly re-greased outer bearing. goes there. The washer, which has a little slot in it. That fits right there in the slot on the spindle. Get the excess grease off of this. And paint, apparently. They painted these. So... Oh, it makes it look pretty. All right. All right. Now that's on. Now I'm going to show you how to set the preload on the wheel bearings. I know there's a little bit of controversy about how tight to get wheel bearings. I'm going to show you the method I use, and I've never had any trouble with it. I'm sure the forum experts will tell me that I'm wrong in a hundred different ways. But the trick is to tighten it down until you start feeling a little tension on the drum, okay? The main thing is you have to turn it, all right? Don't just tighten it without turning the drum. You want to feel this and feel how tight this is. Keep going until it starts to feel tight and then go a little more. Okay, it feels a little tight. Now I'm going to rotate it several times here. And you kind of feel it start to loosen up. It means those bearings are seating. If you were to just tighten this right now without spinning this and call it good, it would take no time at all and this would be super loose. A lot of wobble on front ends is caused by loose wheel bearings, by the way. So now this is loosened up quite a bit. I'm going to tighten it more. Not a lot, just a little. It feels a little tight, but not much. Okay, I'm going to tighten it just a tad more. See how it loosens right up? Okay, now that it feels kind of tight and it's not loosening up anymore. Now I know that those bearings are seated. So now I'll back off to where this feels pretty good. A little more. There we go. That feels pretty good. All right, now I just got to get it to where a cotter pin's going to line up. That might be too loose right there. Let me see. No, nope, that feels pretty good actually. I'm gonna call it good right there. Always use a brand new cotter pin. Never, ever, ever, ever reuse cotter pins. They're cheap. There's no excuse for using a cotter pin over and over. Thank you to Tony Grosso for the real hammers. I can do real work now. Thank you. All right, now we gotta put this back on. Beautimus. All right, with the lug nuts snug, now I'm just going to set it down and torque them. I said torque, not twerk. <laughs> Ta da! We get to do the other side now. Woohoo! You know, for some reason, I'm craving waffles. Um, so the reason I'm using furniture polish is it's just basically a ginormous piece of furniture, right? All right, all ready for a cotter pin now. Perfect. Yay. See, that was painless. 
Model T is still over there working on making this thing look good. Yep. Using the new fancy hammers. I mean, it's no claw hammer, but it'll do. <laughs> there we go. All right. Let's get a wheel on this thing. This thing back on the ground. <clears throat> Got that much. <clears throat> Ta da! The last thing on the list for termite bait here is these tail lights because they don't work. No tail lights, no brake lights, no turn signals, nothing. And after I got under here and started looking at it, I think I found a little bit of a clue. Tell me what you think. So here we are under termite bait, and as you can see at the tail lights here, there are two wires coming out. Same thing on the other side. So I looked at this. One of these wires is for tail light. The other wire is for brake light turn signal. But what I don't see is any way for this to ground itself to the chassis of the car. There's nothing in between here, so I thought, oh, wait a minute. What if I take one of these, I'll take a clip lead, and I'll connect this here to the chassis, and then I'll connect the other side here somehow to the tail lights, and just make that connection. Okay, Tina, go ahead and hit the brake lights. Ah, look at that. And then if I disconnect it, <laughs> so yeah. So these tail lights have never worked because nobody ever made the connection between the chassis and the tail light. So I'm gonna make a cool little wire that goes from here to here and attach that. And then that should take care of the brake light problem. All right, I just made myself a couple of neat wires using 10 gauge flexible wire and some marine ends. Now all I gotta do is figure out how to connect this to the chassis. Since this thing's made of wood, <laughs> there has to be something metal connecting this to the chassis otherwise there's no ground so, yeah i think this will do it i like easy fixes Tina, can you go hit the brake light, please? Yes, sir. Here, hit the brakes and see if the light works. Let me get this tightened first. Stand by just a moment. All right, I am tight and go. Yes! <laughs> All right, let's do the other side. I don't want Rich and Gloria to get rear-ended or their son. That would suck. They're nice people. <laughs> so. Hit it! Ha <laughs> ha! Excellent! Brake lights. Turn the headlights on. All right, hit the brakes again. Yes! Success! Thank you! Although not fully sorted, termite bait is definitely ready to go back home now. Now they can start getting some miles on this car and maybe even get to enjoy it a little bit. The 255A is an extremely rare Model A body style. Although most of the 255As you see these days would be 1931 models, this being a 1930 makes it extremely rare. It sold new in 1930 for $615, and most of these did not live a life of luxury. No, they were used for delivering appliances and tools and 
all kinds of things to people's homes and businesses, they definitely were not babied. With a cargo area height of 43 inches and a length of 58 inches, this isn't just a toy. You can really use this to haul stuff around it. Right now the back of it's just full of Model A parts and fenders and everything spare in a bunch of tubs. It's really loaded down right now, but it still drives like it almost doesn't have anything in it. I'm really looking forward to seeing Rich and Gloria driving okay. this. Another project in the books. So after they come pick this car up and I have space in my shop, we're bringing in the next project car. I hope you'll tune in for that. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you on the next video.